Joining us now to discuss this is highly respected military strategist David Kilcullen in Denver and Planet America host John Barron here in the studio. David, uh, we'll go to you first. Before we discuss this announcement, I want you to set the scene for us. The US-led coalition went into Afghanistan 16 years ago in the wake of September 11 to establish a stable democracy that wasn't a haven for terrorists. Many lives have been lost since, including Australians. What has been the result in Afghanistan today? Well, it sort of depends on um, what you think the goal of the operation was. In fact, in October 2001, the goal was not to create a stable democracy. It was to find and punish al-Qaeda responsible for 9-11. And that goal was really achieved um, within a year. But the diversion of assets into Iraq and a really um, over-ambitious agenda of nation building and democracy promotion led both the United States and its allies and NATO into a really heavy commitment, um, which peaked under President Obama in 2012. Since we've drawn down since then, we've seen a very significant resurgence of the Taliban. Much more importantly, we've seen a resurgence of al-Qaeda into some of the same areas where they were before 9-11, and also the emergence of Islamic State uh, in uh, Afghanistan. So I would say if you look at the situation today, it is significantly more dangerous in terms of international terrorism than it was uh, on 9-11. Mm. So things have gone backward in that respect. And so the president says he's adopting a conditions-based approach. What was the substance of that announcement there? Well, let me give you a general reaction. Um, this speech sounded to me as if it had been written by um, certain military officers who I know well uh, in, in the White House and the Pentagon. It is very much the sort of strategy that the military has been asking for, not one based on a set timetable, which was a direct uh, criticism of President Obama announcing the end date at the beginning of the surge when he gave his speech on Afghanistan in December of 2009, um, and also focusing on uh, achieving conditions on the ground rather than a particular number of troops. The military's always been very concerned about uh, presidential decisions that are focused on troop numbers as if the troop numbers was the same as the strategy. And I think what we've heard here is a counter-terrorism rather than a counter-insurgency strategy, and one that is going to be based on uh, much more significant use of lethal force and a restrained approach to, uh, as the president called it, nation building and, and, and economic development. There's a few gems in there that I think we should talk about in a bit more detail, but that I think is the thrust of it. Yeah, and so one of those was, we are not nation building, we're going in there to kill terrorists. So what do you make of that as an approach? We've heard uh, constantly from um, security specialists over the years, security experts, uh, that they are constantly confounded by a lack of a clear, coherent strategy in Afghanistan. Does, what, to what extent does this announcement go towards a clear, coherent strategy? Well, what I think the president was trying to do here is to ring fence the American role and say the American military does kinetics. It fights the bad guys and it kills terrorists. It doesn't do the, every aspect of the campaign. And we expect the Afghans and importantly the Indians and others to step forward and do a lot more of that. He talked about training and supporting the Afghan military. He talked about targeting the uh, terrorist groups and about preventing the Taliban from taking over, which was an important uh, phraseology there. And I think what we're going to see then is a strategy that's focused on training and supporting the Afghan military, um, some direct action against terrorist groups, probably a significantly uh, enhanced degree of pressure uh, across the border in Pakistan, and then not too much more beyond that. So not the kind of uh, large-scale population protection or economic development or uh, counter-corruption or democracy promotion that we saw from NATO and from President Obama. So as far as you're concerned, is this what the US should be doing? Is this the approach that the US should be taking? I think you can make the case for a number of different strategies and this is certainly one possible strategy that could work. Um, I think there are really three basic approaches. One is to start treating Afghanistan like Korea and say, look, we've had 28,500 troops in Korea since 1953. It hasn't broken the bank. 
It is in fact technically the longest war that the US has been involved in because there's st still technically a, a conflict on the Korean Peninsula. But nobody's whining to get out of Korea because um, people aren't dying. Right? So taking an approach that says we're not surging, we're going to set the level that's sustainable for the next 50 or 60 years and we're going to go with that, that approach. Uh, to be clear, I'm talking about the strategy of it, not the politics of it. The second approach is to take a really light footprint approach and say we're here to do kinetics, we're going to deal with the terrorists and the rest of it is the Afghans problem and we'll provide some support on that but we're not going to be drawn into owning the whole problem. That's I think where President, Obama, uh, President um, Trump has gone here. The third approach would be to simply say we're going to pull out, we, we, we recognise that Western presence in Afghanistan is not just a solution to some problems, it's also the source of others and we're going to be basically pulling our troops out, but we reserve the right to go back in and strike at any time that we see a threat emerging. That was Vice President Biden's preferred option uh, under President Obama, and it's certainly one that I think President Trump and his advisers considered uh, during their negotiations over the past few months. But ultimately, it seems the president decided to go for that option too of a carefully limited, very military focused role for the United States within a broader strategy that expects more of the Afghans and more of regional countries. Mm. But if the Afghans are incapable of that nation building by themselves, what's the point in uh, putting all this effort into a military campaign uh, if the end goal isn't going to be achieved in terms of a stable democracy? Well, I thought it was very interesting what um, President Trump said there. He said it at the beginning and at the end of the speech. He said, we want an honourable and enduring outcome that's worthy of the sacrifice that Americans have put in. So very clearly he's not asking for democracy promotion. He's not asking for um, uh, the creation of a, a democratic style or indeed particularly functional government in Afghanistan. What he's asking for is an enduring outcome. And earlier in the sp speech when he talked about what he wanted to see, he talked about obliterating ISIS and al-Qaeda, about um, preventing the Taliban from taking over the country, which is actually a fairly low uh, threshold. And then he talked about preventing attacks on the United States before they take place. And I think there's, if you read carefully between the lines, he's actually articulating a fairly low bar in terms of success. Um, he's not seeking to promote democracy or make it a stable governance system or counter corruption or any of that. He's just talking about some military outcomes that he's trying to achieve mm. and wanting to make those enduring. And despite so I think this is uh, carefully shrouded in, in um, triumphalist rhetoric, but it's actually uh, quite a modest set of uh, strategic goals that he's putting forward here. And despite the fact that we didn't hear anything about troop numbers there, um, how are you confident that this is one strategy that could work uh, when we have no concept of the, uh, the extent of the effort that the US is going to put into this? We actually do know the, the broad outlines. Um, Mick Nicholson, the, the commander in uh, Afghanistan, uh, Secretary Mattis and others have spoken about this over the past few days. Uh, there was, I think, a bit of a tussle between the White House and the Pentagon with generals wanting the president to actually take responsibility for a specific number and the president not wanting to, to own that. Um, we are expecting somewhere between three and 5,000 additional troops. As I started to say before the speech, though, they're not going to necessarily be frontline combat troops. President Obama put a troop number cap of 8,400 on the campaign. And in order to get around that number, what the Pentagon has been doing for the last couple of years is employing civilian contractors to do a lot of jobs that were traditionally military jobs. And civilian contractors are actually much more expensive than, the, than soldiers. And so one of the things the Pentagon's been trying to do is to replace some of those contractors with military. So I think what we're going to start to see is uh, less contractors on the ground. There's something like 25,000 uh, American contractors in uh, Afghanistan, so uh, you know, significantly three times as many as there are troops. Uh, we'll start to see some of those contractors being replaced by military. We're going to see some enablers going in, uh, as the military calls them, so um, drones, uh, extra firepower, extra intelligence assets, those kinds of things, and they will come with troops to support them. But I think 
in some ways may be unintentional, it's quite clever to avoid stating a specific troop threshold because that, that means that it's now a menu of choices where the Pentagon in discussion with the White House can put more or less in as the situation changes without being tied to a certain number. Um, the only other point I'd make is that he didn't mention Australia, but President Trump implied that he expected to see more from uh, coalition and allied uh, members of the effort in Afghanistan. And of course, Prime Minister Turnbull just recently announced a significant increase of Australian forces in Afghanistan. So one of the questions for us is going to be, will the US expect more than the increase that we've just announced? Uh, and will they expect a different set of capabilities from basically the, the training approach that we've been focused on? Mm -hmm for the past couple of years. I think we'll find that out from the Pentagon in the, in the coming days and weeks. OK, David Kilcullen, our link is just about to fall out there to Denver, Colorado. Thanks so much for your perspective on that announcement by the US President. Donald Thanks, Trump. Joe. Cheers.